Back at it again with another shade of blue from the KC Soccer Journal. My name is Cody Bradley. Thad Bell and Robert Russert are here. Please go subscribe, rate, and review wherever you get your podcasts. I don't do that enough. I don't like doing it, but we would appreciate it very much. Uh, we have a guest with us, a very, a very famous guest. He's bumping elbows with celebrities now. Who's that? It's Who's on the show? Big <laughs> Conrad has joined us. Oh, wow. It's me. You're talking about me. That's amazing. No, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Hey, Jimmy, I think I have an answer for this, you know, because I've known you for quite a while, man. Yes. But yes. are you leaning into the big star label or are you kind of like staying humble? <laughs> say no, no. Oh, my. You know what? It's honestly like we're talking about somebody else that's doing all these fun things. I'm like, wow, look at that guy go. But uh, yeah, it's pretty surreal. I, I have been quite uh, fortunate to be able to be on Ted Lasso and to go to big games around the world and to hang out with some really special people, both here domestically and, and, uh, and abroad in the, in the beautiful game. And I'm very grateful for those opportunities. What's interesting is when you scrape it all away, it's just cause I worked a little bit harder than everybody else when I was a kid, <laughs> which kind of, which kind of propelled me into, you know, achieving some things on, on the field, which is now kind of parlayed into taking those habits and disciplines in my second oh, career and uh creating some opportunities it's all really insane and uh i've got my surfboard and i'm just riding the wave boys you know <laughs> um and we'll see the wave's gonna crash at some point but i'll just go catch the next wave so all is good and i, I think was... the humble part is the fact that you're wearing a whiz hat right now i think ah, that's the humble aspect taste yeah. the rainbow everybody let's get after it <laughs> yes he's come back from bumping elbows with celebrities in hollywood to his roots <laughs> of kansas city here so I, I want to hear some, I want to hear like a story from behind the scenes or something, but can you tell us quickly, like how, how did this even happen? How did you end up on Ted Lasso? Okay. Yeah. Great question. So I had an opportunity to go to England to do some work with Ecolab, who are a sponsor of Minnesota United in particular, and, and are based in Minneapolis. So they sponsor all the Minnesota teams, but they also sponsor Manchester United. And they said, Hey, do you want to come over and do some work with us? around the Man United Liverpool game. Now I've been to some big derbies, but I hadn't been to that one yet. And that's one of the ah. biggest in England, if not the biggest, it was at old Trafford. Eric Ten Hag had just gotten the job. He hadn't had a win yet. So they ended up winning that one two to one. So I went over just for that purpose. And I was like, you know, I'm here. I should probably extend my stay and see what else is cooking, you know, in England. So Jesse Marsh had just won three zero against Chelsea with Leeds. Leeds is about an hour and a half away from Manchester United. I rented a car, as one does, when you don't know how what the hell you're doing on the wrong side of the road. There and, uh, yeah, stay off the sidewalks if I'm driving over in England, everybody. But <laughs> I will say that I reached out to Jesse. Perfect timing, of course, because they're coming off the biggest win, ultimately, of his career uh, with Leeds. And I said, hey, would it be cool if I came and watched training? I hadn't talked to Jesse in a while. I was like, yeah, come on up. So I go up there. I catch training. Uh, he lets me sit in on the video meeting with the guys. So I've got like wow. Brendan and Tyler and Jack Harrison, the guys I know sitting right in front of me. We're watching their breakdown of, of uh, whoever they're playing in the Carling cup uh, the next day. And I go to the game, I sit in the owner's box next to his family and, and Victor Orta, the sporting director. And it was incredible. They won that game too. So I, I actually picked the best week ever to be at Leeds. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse was great and, and very gracious and humble with his time. And I got to pepper him with questions about coaching for, you know, 30 to 45 minutes, which was a lot of fun. And then, and then from there, so, so I should, give you some context so brendan hunt who is coach beard started following me on twitter and i sent him this dm like hey man i don't know if you know who i am but what in the dms yeah yeah, yeah. i well once he followed me i thought that was yeah, a good sign that i could do it so oh, so yeah. i jumped in there and i said yeah i just introduced myself he's like i know exactly who the hell you are i saw you play in the 2006 world cup you dummy you know and i was like <laughs> oh okay well cool i don't have to i don't have to uh act like anything that i'm not i can just be myself and and so I said to him, hey, I'm going to be in England for a week. I'm going to be at the Manchester United-Liverpool game. I'm going to be at the Leeds uh, Cup game. And I'm going to be at Arsenal-Fulham in London later in the week. I don't know where you're filming, Ted Lasso. I had no idea. But but if you want to go catch a game, I'd love to just chill and hang out and get a beer with you. And he's like, yeah, great. I'm going to be at Arsenal-Fulham. Let's just, let's just plan to meet up there. I said, sweet. So, so now fast forward to the Leeds game. After I'm at getting home that night from the Leeds game back to my hotel, I get a DM from Brendan. He goes... Hey, do you want to visit the set? You know, he's like, you don't have to, but if you want, I was like, oh, uh, <laughs> like yeah, I, I could, I could probably fit that. I could probably fit that in. So, so now I'm like rearranging my whole schedule to make sure that uh, I can go. And 
And I go down to to London and stay with a friend, Chris Mackey. Shout out to Mackey. And and um, I end up going to the set. Now, here's the fun fact for you guys. If somebody says, hey, do you want to come onto the set? You don't want to get there right when they start, right? You want to you be kind of cool, right? So, so they started at 9. And what time would you guys show up? Like I would show up at 9. In, this is not you? a fashionably late situation, Jimmy. I would show up at 9. I would be responsible. <laughs> so my wife and I were like, I don't know. When I was talking to my buddy Mackie, like, what time do you show up? I didn't want to be there at 9. Like, they're just getting out of bed. They got to go to hair and makeup. Like, I don't, they're like getting, going through their lines, getting ready for any scenes. I don't know. But, but I understand where you're coming from. And I respect that. <laughs> I tried to get there at 11. Traffic, <laughs> traffic was so bad. I got there at one. <laughs> oh, shit. yeah. I got lost as one does uh, when you're driving in England on the right side of the road. And, and uh, I ended up getting there around one ish, which was actually okay because it was right after they had lunch. And uh, so I go. And it was amazing. I got to to Chip Hamilton as their coordinating producer, an amazing human being. Saw Brendan, and they showed me all the sets, which was cool to kind of walk through the pub and and Rebecca's mm -hmm. office and all these things. And then they're like, "Hey, do you want to go watch them shoot a scene?" I was like, "Yeah, I'd like to do that." So I went over there and I watched them shoot a scene from episode ten, which dropped last week, and it was very cool. And I then I got to meet all the guys. And basically, Brendan set me up. He's like, ooh, 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 tell him that time you played against Zidane. And all the guys are like, you played against Zidane, you know? Ooh, ooh, <laughs> tell him the time you played, you switched jerseys with Andrea Pirlo in, in the World Cup. And they're like, whoa, 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 you, you, you know? So, so he kept Brendan setting me up like fan. that. Yeah, oh, he's a huge fan. He's a huge fan. And so he, he was so kind. So any of the energy and positive energy you see off camera definitely exists uh, or on camera uh, it definitely exists off camera and so they were so nice and, and they loved all the stories that i had and and uh, um he did an, an amazing job of setting me up what a gracious host brendan hunt what an amazing human being and then at the end of the day so i'm just sitting there bullshitting i'm like this is the best and we're laughing we're having fun i'm getting those guys to laugh so much they had to tell us to be quiet because they were shooting the scene <laughs> so so uh <laughs> i was in rare form boys and uh I can at the see end of the you're in rare form now. You're yeah, very excited about it. Oh, I'm, I'm still, I can't even believe it's real. So then, <laughs> yeah. so then at the end of the day, they said, Hey, do you, uh, you want to be in a scene? I was like, uh, yeah, goddamn right. I'd want to be in a scene. So <laughs> I ended up getting to be in a scene and I didn't tell anybody one because I had uh, an NDA, right? I couldn't, I couldn't say anything mm -hmm. at first, but then as time progressed and it felt like, all right, this was shot in August, by the way. I, I started not to get loose lipped with it, but I kind of told my family it's possible that maybe I'll be in episode 10. And then, uh, but I thought, I'm not going to go hype it up because if I hype it up and then they cut that scene, yeah, I'm yeah. going to feel like a total a hole. So, so, so I didn't say anything. And I even went to the premiere down in LA and, and director, uh, the director Matt told me that I was going to be in. Still didn't believe him though, right? You got to see it because they right. could, they could still right. make an edit later. And I end up getting in and I get my one and a half seconds of fame. And I'm going to, it's like my new roll of the clip. My, my initial roll of the clip was my goal against Mexico or my tackle against Messi. And, <laughs> and, and now this is my new roll of the clip. And, and honestly, my kids don't remember me playing, right? They have no recollection outside of what oh, I, right. I force feed them down their throats, right? With all my <laughs> highlights. But, but this, they're like, what street, total street cred. Like I have, my, that, I've gone way up in their books and, uh, I'll take it. So thank you to Brendan and to Jason and everybody for for <laughs> this opportunity. Un incredible. I will say, though, the next day I did go to the Arsenal Fulham game. They invited me to go with them. And I got to go drink beers with Jason and Brendan and Chip and Joe Kelly, who's a showrunner, and watch Arsenal play. And that that's what you won't see, but that was probably super, yeah. like, just as cool. They're, like, just, they're not in costume. They don't have to be on. They're just being regular dudes. And and that was a big thrill for me as well. Okay, and I got to take a, I got to take a photo with Gunner Soros too, which was like next level, right? I mean, yeah, I was ticking a lot of boxes that week, boys. I just ticked a lot of boxes. <laughs> and so Wait. so you asked a question, and I ran with it and just talked for five minutes. And I appreciate you being on my podcast. So you guys are guests now on my <laughs> podcast. Here. I actually I actually qualified it with quickly beforehand. No, no it doesn't <laughs> exist with me. It doesn't exist with yeah. me. You, no, you, you, you don't Jimmy. know Jimmy that well, Cody. That's <laughs> you can run with it, man. Listen, listen. Bob Ganser once said that brev brevity is an art form that I have not yet mastered, and he is right. And he was right then, and he's right now. I just brevity is not my thing. It oh, give me give power. me a break, Jimmy. Bob Ganser did not uh, achieve that either. Believe me, <laughs> <laughs> I know from firsthand experience. Without yeah. a so, doubt, without <laughs> a doubt, the biggest celebrity appearance this season on Ted Lasso. There's I'll no. Take way it. I don't believe you, it. but I'll take it. 
I'll take it. There's no way the very next episode comes out with an even bigger guest appearance. There's no possible <laughs> way. That oh, it is possible, actually, because because I haven't seen it yet, but I know that that there's a pretty big name in episode 11. Yeah, no, no spoilers. There. No spoilers, though. So your kids don't roll their eyes when you start telling stories now, do they? Now they're like, oh, yeah, they, oh, yeah that's like instant. That is instant. Oh, OK. But, <laughs> but with regard to Ted, this they're very right. excited and very proud of their dad that because all their friends just cannot believe it. Like my youngest, they're they're like, no, that's not your dad. And she's like, that's my dad. They just won't, they don't actually don't believe now that that's her dad. And I'm like, we'll get them nice. on the phone. Let's FaceTime. We'll tell them. We'll we'll show them who, what's what. But uh, so it's only your wife rolling her eyes now. Oh, all the time. She's, <laughs> she's proud of me, but like uh, reluctantly proud of me. Like, oh my god, here we go again with this guy. But, she may have uh, heard the stories a thousand times, right? Oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. She knows all the ins and outs, the highs and lows, the inflections in my voice. She knows what's coming. Did you <laughs> nail the the confused look? in one take was this one take how many did you do we did two takes you know i will say that that so i shot the opposite side so i had roy kent staring me down i was gonna say did you get the awesome. did you get in the moment you have to actually see him doing his stride okay I, he did i i had three or four takes of his kind of take just to get the pacing and the timing of his walk less than like his facial reactions because the guy's absolute money brett is absolute money at that stuff but i mean what a, i mean I think I think you peaked when you have Roy Kent staring you down and at any point in your life, you know, so so, no, I think I nailed that for him. So he could really feed off of me as an actor. And then for me, I got two takes and the and ultimately I saw the facial reactions of the other two in the hallway. They're both contest winners that uh, oh. Ann and Kyle and and won it from the big slick. Uh, she she oh, cool. yeah, she won the auction to, to be in the show. She's great. I still talk to them because we have this like crazy shared life experience. Yeah. And then and then I saw their reactions when they shot theirs, their close ups. I'm like, I'm not going to do the same. So I ultimately mouthed what the F that's like. That's what I yes, mouthed. you did. <laughs> and they actually cut around me saying what the and they left the kind of right. the F at the end. Yeah. So so I, I, I did both takes the same way. Now, honestly, this is me nitpicking myself in this career achievement. That uh, I wish I would have just kind of given a different, a di just something different than what the act. Take, that huh? way they had a different option. But uh, the best actors all have the same thing. Yeah, so you just you know, always second guessing up. yourself. But uh, as long as I get an IMDb page at this point, I think that's all that really matters. <laughs> and my SAG card. So next time, Jimmy, you can make you know change it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, you know I can get another opportunity. Assuming this isn't the last season, you know you got to have a callback. No. Get, the, get JC back on the show. So spin off. Uh, spin off, yeah. Spin no, off, it's yeah. it's a Wrexham appearance next time. Wrexham. So fun fact, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds started following me on Twitter. Um, oh man. Yeah. He's I was like, what is happening? Me. I sent him a DM, he hasn't responded. So I don't know if it's real. <laughs> Big Jimmy Conrad. I know. I All right, Jimmy. Well, hey, you're a busy guy. We know that. We know that. And smoke in a week. and mirrors, smoke and mirrors, Bob, but I appreciate that. <laughs> in a week, we've got uh TST coming up. So mm. tell us about the tournament. And, yeah, so uh, give us some odds on your team. Oh, winning the, I don't know if I can do that, man. That feels like you know I'm. Uh, who's that guy from from Brentford? Ivan Tony. You know, I'm not betting on my own team and stuff. You know, <laughs> <against> the, <laughs> or betting against my team, I should say. Pete Rose style. Or, no, he always bet with his team. Anyway, Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> sidebar. But I will say that uh, that TST is exciting. So I got presented with this potential opportunity last year, probably October ish. And it was pretty easy. I'm like, I'm in. I knew that this was going to be a big, big deal. I don't know if it was going to be a big deal in year one, but I knew moving forward, it, they were going to turn it into something special. They had already proven the concept with TBT, with the basketball side yeah. of it. Ten years in, all the games are on ESPN+. Plus. Super exciting. Super awesome. So I knew the concept would work. So I got in, ultimately split it with DeMarcus Beasley. Uh, we shared some time together working with Fox Sports at uh, Qatar in the World Cup. So... We come together on this, and uh, it's a million-dollar winner-take-all tournament. We got 32 teams. Clint Dempsey's got a team. Nick Romano, Mike McGee have a team. Chad Johnson Garza has a team. Ocho Cinco, um, another pal of mine from from the Fox Sports and Qatar group. He's on Cincinnati's team. They're in our group actually, so that'll be a lot of fun to see Ocho. And um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I think I put together a pretty good team. We're building around Dwayne Day Rosario, my former teammate at San Jose Earthquakes. And good obviously choice, man. Good choice. One of the best to ever do it. He's my oldest player on the team outside of myself. I more more coach than player in this. Bees doesn't want to play at all. So 
I'm only in kind of in a pinch, but we got a lot of guys that just retired. So they're about 31, 32. We got Zach Lloyd from FC Dallas. Uh, you know, I was trying to kind of refrain because I know Dallas, you know, has a we have a rich history from Kansas City perspective with the <laughs> Dallas players. But you, know, you got a guy with some national team caps. You got to bring him in. He was excited to play for us. And, and he's been great. Chris Kanopka, who who played for us in yep. Kansas City. I tried to get Bor uh, Boris Pardo, who's still playing in, in the indoor soccer league. He ended up going with another team. Uh, John Kempen was another goalkeeper I spoke to. I just went all Kansas City Happy goalkeepers at some point. But Kempen had to back out because he's got like a real job now. Um, I got I got Matt Beasler's little brother, Nick Beasler, right? Yeah. I, I tried to ask Matt. I don't know. He's he's doing beer pong or whatever he's doing. Uh, pickleball, whatever it is. Chicken and chicken, pickle, chicken and pickle is, beer pong. I don't know what he's doing. But uh, but uh, well, shout out to Matt have Beasler there, for, for dedicating some of his book to me. I Can I say for the record? I can't believe Matt Beasler wrote a book before I did. You know, like I just, I thought I was really in line to be the first real author out there, given I had written for uh, some outlets back in the day. But there you go, Matt Beasler trying to one up me. Way to go, Bees. But uh, so, yeah, I got a couple of Beezes with Demarcus and, and Nick. Uh, we got a couple guys that are playing in the indoor soccer league and play for the U.S. Beach soccer team Ricardo Carvalho and Lucas Roque. Lucas was up for MVP this past year for the Baltimore yeah. Blast. So we're excited to have him in. Chandler Hoffman, uh, Adam John. So we got some tanks up top. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got a lot of hard workers. So so you, you mix good hard workers with a couple talented players. And it reminds me of 2003 Kansas City where you had that and then Precky, right? So Dwayne Day Rosario is the Precky of the group. There it and is. Uh, we're just trying to build around him and make sure that we play to his strengths because we know that he can win us some games. Who else? Looking around, the rosters are all out. You can see all the other teams. Who? Someone out there you're excited to play against who's getting an extra elbow in this tournament? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's interesting is the Clint Dempsey team is going in the same group as the AJ De La Garza team and the Mike McGee, Nick Romano team. Only two of those three are going to get through. So, so that's a bit of a shame. Uh, I want to see how the U S women do, of course, you know, big yeah. fans of what they're doing. Heather O'Reilly, a, a great friend. So I'm curious to see how she does. What well, we got that you got hashtag United, who's a YouTube team that's now turned into a real team. And they just got promoted, I think to the seventh division in England. I've known Spencer and his family for a long time. And I played with hashtag before. So, so they're in our group, so I'm excited already off the bat to play them. Ocho Cinco's in our group, but we got Hoist Gracie. If you remember him from the – like, he's the OG of, of MMA down in Brazil. He's got a whole bunch of futsalers in his team. That's our group. So we have a pretty solid, tough group, and yeah. we got to win that first game. We play Gracie SC. That's on June 1st. We play at noon. You can find all these games live on my YouTube channel, and then the bigger, bigger games will be on NBC Peacock, which has just been announced, which is very, very cool. Um Go subscribe say, to Jimmy's yeah, YouTube go subscribe, channel. Whatever you know what then, you guys don't have, you don't have to. No, to you know what? Don't don't bother. Don't bother. Don't. Oh, bother. I'm 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 ah. I'm looping it in with a with a self with a self promotion here. You, so they go, should subscribe, subscribe to what to you are doing, but for me, don't, don't you know what? Just unfollow. You can just unfollow, unsubscribe. Ah. Don't don't leave any comments. I don't want any of your engagement. <laughs> no, but um, you know, if we have a chance to play the Borussia Dortmunds, you know, West Ham, Wrexham. Uh, I know that uh, Cesc Fabregas is, is over with Como, I think. So oh, wow. So you have all these really interesting teams. West Ham's interesting because they got Carlton Cole playing and, and they got some familiar names. But how fit are these legends, really? Right? Exactly. That's what I want to know. And I think I think our median age is skewers a little bit younger uh, than, than most of the other teams. And so I'm, I'm excited about that possibility. And for the ones that are even younger than us, they might not have the same experience. So I feel like we're in that sweet spot. But again, getting back to your odds, I don't really know, man. I think year one is the best year to win this tournament because nobody really knows yeah. how to take advantage of the 7v7 with the field and the size of it and also the size of the goals and the 20-minute halves unlimited subs. Also, I should say, Cody, if your team's winning 2-1 to one after the 40 minutes is done, that's not the end of the game. No. It, it's it's you got to score one more than the, the highest score in this little extra time, oh. the target score. So whoever gets the three first – Theoretically, since you're already up by one, you only need a goal to make that happen, then you should figure out a way to make that happen. But it gives me a chance to potentially get two, and then I would win the game. So there's a lot of like tactics and ideas and thoughts. There's no throw-ins, all kick-ins, so everything's kind of a set piece. So the teams that can kind of figure out how to manage a lot of that will uh, obviously go a long way. And, and uh, if we're even close to getting near the top of the table or going on to win it or be in the final, I mean, that is going to be some next level-ish. And so I, I, I'm really excited about this. and and. From what I understand, the Barcelonas and Real Madrids and and they've got a lot of big clubs ready for next year. So you got to win it this year, man. Because once those guys start jumping in, it's going to get a little crazy. 
Well, Jimmy, you know, you've you've made it in life, you know, from childhood on, obviously. Uh, so much so that you don't need follows from us. So, you know, anyway, there are other KC alums. You know, yes. Davey Arno, Josh Wolf. You could go on farther and coaches. farther. Coaches. They're coaches. Yeah. Though. So what other KC alums' success are you maybe, maybe a little jealous of? No, no. Jimmy's not jealous of anyone. Look, <laughs> jealous. He's in California. He's all tan. He's I thin. would say I would say admire. Let me just say admire. Oh, okay. There say, you. Yeah, Chris Klein getting a being a vice president of a club oh, after a year and a half okay. after Gotta retiring. Go odd, well, timing. Yeah. odd timing for Chris. No, Klein. no, I love it. Let's <laughs> let's jump in on the Chris Klein stuff. So a year and Break a half. Down. Yeah, a year and a half after uh, retiring, he's already a VP of a club. That sounds awesome. And then and then not really being held accountable for your team being <laughs> kind of stucky and you're still in the job. And then and then and then you break the rules and you still have a job. Like, yeah, sign me up for that. Like, That's, where does that, right. that, where does that exist? That is what a job. That's a cushy, cushy job. Only place he can go from there is politics. I, really? I mean, he's, he's figured it out. I mean, he's got a nice breeding ground here with the galaxy. So, so, so I'm, I'm kind of admiring from afar. Like, how is this guy surviving in this job? And, uh, I saw him last week at the FIFA event in LA and, um, he looks healthy. He looks, he looks, he looks stressed, but, but healthy. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's what I think about all the guys that get into the front office or, or coaching stuff. Man, they age quickly, you know. And mm. I, I and, and I love the coaching side of it. And I think at some point, once my kids get older, I will jump into that as well. But I'll already be old, so it won't look like I'm as aging as much. But some of these guys, man, I feel bad for them. <laughs> yeah, but I'll be. But I love what Josh is doing at Austin, and obviously with with Davey, it's very cool. Though I guess the guys that are visible. I mean, you also have to kind of admire the guys that have quietly disappeared and just going on to live their lives. I think there's some, some real value in that too. Uh, you mentioned Precky earlier. Um, I always thought it was quite humorous how, you know, you and I talked at least once a week back in 2004 and beyond, you know, pretty detailed stuff. And then Precky would always pull me over. All right, let me tell you what's really like over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. No, Precky, no Precky's, Precky doesn't BS you there, right? I mean, he's, he's pretty straightforward and, and yeah. <laughs> Even if he's not right per se, he's gonna stay with it. <laughs> yeah, so you gotta you gotta respect his stubbornness in some capacity. That kind of guy but, right there. but I learned a lot from him. I actually learned a lot. I watched him coach a youth team one time. He's like, "Hey, come out and check out my my U10s." I just happened to be coaching another team not too far away, so I'm like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll come check it out." And it, it, I was really fascinated by how he communicated to these kids and, and demanding, but but warm. You know, and I think there's a real sweet spot there that a lot of coaches haven't mastered. It's a real art form in terms of communication. And I still take a lot, honestly, from that hour session, I take a lot from what he did and how he did it. So I'm not surprised that he's been a, a successful coach, but I am mm. surprised that he hasn't gotten more looks as the number one. Um, but he seems to have found a nice little spot as a number two. So so I, I hope that uh, he continues to do well. Big fan of Precky. Yeah, he'll, yeah, he'll probably good get another shot fights. at head coach. Yeah. Well, yeah. Good at picking fights, sure. Well, that's the thing. Maybe that's why he's not a great number one because, you know, as a number two, you get a little bit more freedom, I think, to <laughs> to keep your thoughts to yourself. Obviously, there's no microphone stuffed in front of your face, which uh, maybe got him into trouble the first time. But but I like his candidness. And, and I think that the league, when I think about MLS, could use more of that um, mm -hmm. because uh, we need to create some villains. And I don't think he cares whether he's a villain or not. So uh, speaking of Klein maybe being a little bit stressed lately, uh, Looking at Sporting KC, there's been a little bit of stress lately. Peter Vermees has been under fire a lot lately. Lately, what How would you fix that team? Oh, wow. How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Pretty loaded question. I, I, <laughs> I want to preface whatever I say about this current in-the-moment situation that I think Peter Vermees has revolutionized the game in the area. I think that he has convinced – an ownership group to really buy in all the way. And that goes with infrastructure that goes with buying players and taking risks. And I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. However, sometimes your biggest strength is also your biggest weakness. And I think the amount of control that he's had once it wasn't going to work. And at some point at time was just going to evolve and, and, and the game was going to evolve or some things were going to evolve or the, the perception of you or, or how the players receive you was going to evolve. And, and that's hard to stay fresh in that capacity, especially when he wears as many hats as he does. And so I think at this point, 
there might be time for a new voice. And I think maybe some fans would argue it should have happened a few years ago um, and, and almost getting ahead of it. And, and that's what almost surprises me in some ways that he hasn't seen that because he's so good. And even as a player, his anticipatory skills were fantastic, right? He could read the tea leaves before anybody else could. And, and I feel like he just, because of pride and, and I, and I, you know, I, I know him well enough to know that he he wants to be the guy that fix it. He's the guy that, that thinks he's the perfect person to fix it. And that's what's got him to this point. And that's what's got him such tremendous success, both as a player and as a coach. But there was going to be a point in this whole part of this evolution and, and this growth of, of Sporting Kansas City in particular, where it just wasn't going to work. And what was he going to do then? And, mm-hmm. and that's where we are. And, and so now the team's playing a little bit better. We've had some evidence of that. Though they just got slapped around by St. Louis, so you so just ignore that it, one. That one doesn't count. Well, it's just hard to know which <laughs> which version of it is it. You know, you got you get Polito back. You got Shall- like when Polito comes back, it opens up space for Johnny Russell and, and Daniel Shalloway to do more things and to have more time. T- teams can't key on them as much. But but we just saw from St. Louis's perspective that I don't even know if it's an attacking side of it. The attacking side seems okay. It's defensively that it just it's just it's so inconsistent that inconsistent. that. And that's really I, – I know it frustrates Peter because I mean, what he can't play for the guys, right? And I think he's at that – and I'm sure he's been like that for a few years. I, I can't – I'm trying to find solutions, and the solutions I'm finding just aren't good enough, which then speaks to, well, well, put on the hat where you're scouting or put on the hat where you're signing players. That isn't working then or whatever it is. So there's got to be one part of the, the things that he's controlling that he might need to relinquish. And I just don't know which one he's going to go with because I remember him as general manager or, or sporting director when Kurt Anolfo was in charge. And he, right. I could see him chomping at the bit to start coaching then because he's like, he can already see what Kurt should be doing. And Kurt wasn't in his opinion. And so, you know, when he took over, I don't think anybody was surprised with regard to that, but, but right. uh, yeah, this is a unique position to find himself in. And, and uh, it's unfortunate because he's created a, a legacy that's going to live on for a very, very long time. And this is going to at least it feels like this is starting to tarnish that legacy a little bit, which is which has got to be pretty disappointing for him. It, it is rare for any coach to uh, go out on top, though. It is 100 percent. Yeah, yeah. There's only a, a rare few that are going to be afforded that opportunity. So I don't know where that stepping off point is or where he's going to consider it. I know he just got a five year extension. You know, I don't I, I'm sure there's some stipulations involved there where, OK, I mean, I mean, the problem I have, if if knowing him as well as I do, and it's probably not as well as obviously as you guys at this point, because I wasn't around him as much as you probably are, but but I don't know if if he'll be able to just be the sporting director. I just don't think he he's either got to be controlling the team and give the sporting director to somebody else and the scouting and pass that on to somebody else and just be held accountable for the wins and losses. Or, or I just don't see how he he is going to relinquish that. I just think he, he he'll just be too much. I don't know how he gets out of his own way. I just don't know how he does it. Given how strong of a personality he is, I just don't know how he does it. Right. So it's either got to be a completely clean break, or I don't know. But but uh, I wish him the best. Again, I I, I know that we had uh, a little bit of a I don't know what the best word is here. I'm trying to be pol- polite about the whole thing, but but not the best ending to our relationship when I was player and he was coach. But we've worked through that through the years, and obviously time has softened a lot of that. But, um, you know, I still want the best for him and obviously for the club and the fans. Well, that passion for him and that passion for you, it's just hard to turn off. It's who you are, you know? Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. Yeah. How do you as a player deal with stretches like this? You know, the team, I think all of the players have seen themselves have success. They know that they are better than they've been playing. How do you how do you deal with this as a player? I would say you just got to focus as cliche as this is. It was a cliche <laughs> question, so that's fair. Well, that's fair. <laughs> you know, there was a, a phrase that that Bob Gansler would, would say, and I've got a lot of Bob Gansler-isms uh, stuck in my brain. <laughs> but But just do the simple things perfect every time. Like, just get back to doing – don't try to be anything more than you're not. Do, do your job. And, and when I played for Bruce Serena, I thought he was excellent at, here are the three things that I need you to do really well today. You focus on those three things, then, and everybody else does theirs, we're probably going to get a result. And I'm sure the guys are thinking that, and I'm sure Peter's saying something very similar, but you have to actually go out there and execute on these things. And it just feels like guys are shutting off at the wrong time. Or 
you potentially need a goalkeeper to make a big save in a big moment. Now, in fairness to any goalkeeper slander that's happening out there, and I shouldn't be saying this because I'm a center back and we really <laughs> always blame the goalkeepers <laughs> before ourselves. But but when I'm coaching now, I always tell my goalkeepers who obviously don't have a lot of experience and are very vulnerable because none of the young kids really like to play. But if there's a goal given up, there's probably three or four mistakes that happened prior to whatever the shot was at that final moment. And so what are those being what, – what, what's being done to rectify that? What's the team shape look like? I, I'm a huge – believer in team shape and i think if you have good team shape on both sides of the ball it'll solve about 90 percent of your problems and 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 i i feel like in transition once kansas city turns the ball over god they just get punished they just get absolutely punished and it makes me wonder what's being talked about in that kind of phase of the game and 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 i'm sure this is where peter's gonna be like dude i'm telling this to my guys like i've had conversations with the guys that i know that coach like you think we're not telling our guys that of course they are but it's just but but something's not connecting when whatever you're saying. So, so how do you rectify that? How do you maybe you throw a player in there that, that maybe isn't as talented on one side of the ball or in one area, but is very good at that dude, roll mm-hmm. that guy out and see what happens, you know? And I'm sure that's happening too. And, and sometimes as a coach too, you're very loyal to certain players that have done that in the past, but aren't doing it as consistently as they are, or, or they, as they once were. Peter Vermees. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> that's every coach, but, um, but yeah, I mean, everybody's got their favorites and, and it's tough. It's tough to watch some of your favorites get older and, 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 or just not perform as they once were. And, and that's, uh, that's difficult. So, so they're in, it's, I don't think there's one button that Kansas city can push to like rectify what's happening, but it seemed like they found a little bit of their way. And I really love their game in Seattle where it felt like there was this collective belief, which is an intangible, right? There's just like, we're going to go out and kick Seattle's ass today. And, and we're going to try to go do something positive every single time we go forward. We're going to get a cross. We're going to get a shot. We're going to do something that's putting them on the back foot. And I felt like that was the game that I saw that for 90 minutes, where I, sometimes you know we'll see it for a half or we'll only see it for 30 minutes or whatever it may be. And then you see the St. Louis game. You're like, what happened to the team that played against Seattle? You know. And so <laughs> there's a real Jekyll and Hyde feel to the team this year. And, and that doesn't necessarily lend itself to success. Anyway, that's me going off on a tangent. To get back to your question, which is, Cody, <laughs> what would I do as a player? It's it's holding – you have to hold guys accountable. And, and again, you have to kind of reinforce that just, just be do what you're good at. And don't – don't we don't have to overdo anything. You know, we got to find Johnny Russell – where he can run at teams, right? We need to get shallow away, like running in behind or just, just being dangerous by his runs and his energy and his, his enthu- I, shallow away loves to play. You could just, his enthusiasm is infectious. So mm-hmm. how do we get him in good spots to really showcase that Polito needs to get some service. Okay, good. How do we make that happen? And, and sometimes we're either playing too slow or we're, we're trying to hit that home run ball too soon. It's like finding that pacing. And so that's where I really feel like losing Ilya Sanchez was a big loss. I think he's a good guy at dictating flow. When to go fast, when to slow it down. And uh, I don't think you've actually replaced uh, his quality. Thanks for having me, everybody. Appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The end of the show. Thanks for – hit like and subscribe. There you go. <laughs> no, you, you left us uh, uh, speechless there for a second. He's a pro, the TV pro. The callback, you did the whole long answer, and then you just went right back to the question, he's a pro. Yeah, he, Thank you, Cody. Is. I appreciate that's, it. Uh, You'd be my publicist. That's that could be part of why he's a sporting legend. Uh, <laughs> so, so Jimmy, what did uh, becoming a sporting legend mean to you? And there is a reason I asked this very specific question because there are some who don't maybe think that you deserve that. And oh, no. whoa, who? <laughs> Cody. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> might be this guy named Cody. He's. I don't know why he would think that. But... T- tell me any player that's had more best eleven appearances than me. That's all, Cody. That's all I'm saying. I've That's never it. said a bad word about Jimmy <laughs> in my life. Yeah, so, I will say that I thought I got it a little sooner than I had expected to to become a sporting legend at age 38. Was I mean, I'm going in with Lamar Hunt, you know, and uh, Peter Vermes. I was like, ah, one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> okay, you know, so I just, let me just stop you right I, there. I would just say that, like, I feel like you get that when you're like mid 50s, you know, there not not late 30s. But, so, but I'm not going to say no. Of course, I'm going to take that. I am not taking away your sporting legend. You are a, clearly a sporting legend for the the playing career and the postseason career. Staunch Kansas Cityan. <laughs> I have made the point, though. I'm looking long into the future here. 
this league is going to keep expanding, keep growing. And if all goes according to plan, it's, it'll be a top five league in the world at some point, right? And if yep. that is the case, then every player on the field is going to be better than some of the names on the list. That's yeah, all. That's I mean, yes, best. I I want I want that. Like I I I coach to hope that these kids are ten times better than I ever was, which shouldn't be that hard. I will say that my talent <laughs> wasn't traditional talent. My talent was commitment. And so so if you want to use me as a sporting legend that walked on in college, didn't get drafted, and became captain of the national team and played in the World Cup, then then I think I have a. Uh, I have a story that's just as good as anybody on that wall. And, and, and so uh, I'm not even trying to get defensive about this because I, I agree with you. I think I, I remember thinking it at the time, yo, know, Beasler and, and Zussi and, and these guys are going to have more games for the club at some point, which they mm -hmm. have, you know, they're going to accomplish and have accomplished and played in the world cups and all that stuff, just like I have. And so at what point, what's the distinguishing factor between us and then anybody that's coming up? I right. think there's a there's a you're laying a foundation for what it meant to get this team off the ground to resonate with the community, and, and so I feel like I'm more of an intangible selection if I had to defend myself a little bit. But I do think I have a story that uh, hopefully is more relatable than the ones that have just kind of been blessed with this incredible talent. Yeah. Um, and no, so, your legend so. your legend will grow. It's the same thing as like in baseball. I'm sorry, but Babe Ruth was a fat guy, and he's there's not the best baseball <laughs> player of all time. Oh, and Cody's Clayton got Kershaw, the slander. Right Clayton Kershaw would keep embarrass going, him. Going. So that's all I mean here. You're you were a legend in your time, and, and even now, it. and even when the best player in the world plays for Sporting KC, you will belong on that wall. Thad and he'll was, know my name, and that's the best part about it. Thad was trying to get me in trouble there. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I no. I think I think that they're there probably will be some players that should be questioned uh, in 30 years time. Like how did he, he actually Chris get on the wall? There? Chris Klein. Can we get him off there? Come on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The slander stick. Cody's got the slander stick out. <laughs> oh, there, there may be one up yeah, there. Guess, I already hey, questioned. Chris, come over here. Guess who I got with me right now, Cody. Guess what I got? Chris Klein, everybody. <laughs> Let's bring him out. <laughs> Let's bring him out. I think Thad and I have the same name. We're thinking of that should not be on there. Say it. Name names. Josh Wolf. Wow. Now, we've, We've said this on the show before. Yeah. He's being shy in front of you, but Thad is normally not shy about Josh Wolf. He's uh, he's fine. he's, he's, he's fine doing right. a really good job with Austin. He's been a, he's been a good coach. Uh, he was not one of my favorite players. Okay, I respect it. You I haven't uh, commented on his bobblehead. I, I I'm just actually seeing it right now. So so when I do my interviews, I, I look at the camera. I don't look at the well. I try not to look at the monitor. But now that I see it, that is one handsome bobblehead. I will say, some bobbleheads don't really look like the person they nailed my hair i i was like really like wow that was excellent because you see some bobbleheads like that does not look like the person they that's nailed the generic white guy i'll tell you that that's it i mean <laughs> i mean i'd like let's say above average i think it looks more like you now than it did then yeah that's probably true jimmy you're aging well you've got the paul rudd thing going on man california suits you yes i'm from california so i'm back to my roots but yeah. uh I appreciate you saying that. Again, Cody can be my publicist. I I, uh, <laughs> I still here. exercise. See, the thing is, I still exercise, kind of like I used to when I was a player, but I don't play anymore. And uh, I eat a lot better. I'm a vegetarian now, and I just am very thoughtful about my diet and nutrition, and I think all that helps. So you were, you were always very hey, mindful Jimmy. of that, though, when you played. That's true, but a lot a lot more now because you know, as you guys know, when you get a little bit older, it's be, stuff hang hey, stuff hangs on to you a little bit more. You'd be the last guy out there on the on the practice field doing yoga. That's true. My yoga was good. You know what the yoga was good for for me, and I would do it before games too. Was I just was such? I don't know. Yeah, I was anxious, right? And, and yoga just you just it's yes, the stretching and obviously it helps some fluidity and and some flexibility in your body, but mainly it just helped me relax and breathe, right? And so I feel like I took some big steps in my career when I started adding yoga to my my routine. Yoga's great, hey, Jimmy. I'm gonna piss yeah. Cody off here, but you know, on the yes. show we like to piss Cody off because I'm gonna go off script. So 2004 MLS yep. Cup, I remember distinctly going into the locker room area and you were standing at the locker room door and you looked at me and said, was that a goddamn handball or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so my question hot. is, is that the thing still in your career that pisses you off the most, that handball by Aleko that wasn't Yeah, gold? I mean, that's that's definitely one of them. I would 
I, I'll go. Yes, that that I still talk about it. I still fires me up. I get triggered very easily when I talk about uh, Aleko, and Aleko knows that it was a handball, a cheater, and, and so. <laughs> And he'll, he'll he won't admit it publicly to anybody. If I call him out, he'll just say that no, wasn't. But but in person, he I know he has told it to me. But but there was a the the, the penalty that we gave up in the World Cup to Ghana, where they called mm. it on Gooch for being a little bit taller than the little guy. That was like the worst penalty I maybe have ever seen. Definitely in person. And uh, so that one fires me up too. And obviously there was a mm. lot at stake in that one because if we get a win in sure. that game, we go out to the round of sixteen. Not to say playing an MLS Cup final was was a big deal too. <laughs> What's interesting about that, there's a couple issues with that, that handball with Aleko, was that Davey Arno had a quick throw-in. And I just, Davey didn't take any throw-ins that whole season. But mm -hmm. for that particular instance, he decided to throw it back to me quick, and then I was under pressure. And I thought, I'm not just going to lump it up the field. I'm going to pop it up over Aleko's head, over to Jose Berciaga. And Aleko jumped, turned, and it hit his hands. And and it went in, and he scored on a breakaway. And no VAR, none of that. Stuff. VAR would have easily turned that around, you know, and like, five seconds right. and i remember getting validated mm. after the game obviously everybody told me it wasn't a handball but timmy howard was with manchester united at the time and he said that sir alex ferguson was watching the the final and he said that that call was so bad this is what timmy told me that he would have pulled his team off the field and stopped playing wow and wow. so i got validated by sir alex ferguson. validation <laughs> and so so that is when i actually kind of came to grips with and, and at peace with it now what pisses me off is that we let that one goal turn into two more with over the mm -hmm. next 10 15 minutes and yeah. that was something that i think we scored too early in that game we had won so many 1-0 games in 2004 that when jose berciaga scored with five minutes in i remember kind of thinking god we got to hold on to this for 85 minutes you know usually we have a 1-0 lead around the 60 65th minute you know somewhere around the papa john's magic minutes and 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 then we go on to hold on to Good it for 15 time. 20 minutes and and so you know, uh, the Zardmeister, you know, we, we knew he had our back with that regard. This is some deep cuts for all you hardcore. Yes, I love all of these. And, um, and so so I, I feel like we were kind of on unfamiliar territory, and DC obviously took advantage of that through some air, absolutely terrible refereeing. So shout out to Michael Kennedy for being little and not paying attention to that one. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what his size had to do with anything. He just, he just, missed, he just missed it. So what are you going to do? But, but yeah. it's on us yeah. for allowing that one goal to turn into two more. Uh, and we should have done a little bit better with that. Yeah, it, it's easy when the ref blows a call like that, though, to kind of get down a little bit. Now, I knew that Cody was going to push back against you being a sporting legend. So I prepared. We've been trying to lean into the top five list kind of thing here. So I have a, a list of reasons why I think that you are a sporting legend. That's got a top five? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. So number five. Uh, you were a defender that was a scoring threat, and we have not really seen much of that over the last few <laughs> years off of corner kicks. So yes, that is true. Uh, okay, I was also were... defender of the year, so it's yeah. not like I was a chump. No, no, you <laughs> were, you were, you were. But yes, in terms of a, a scoring threat, I was very good. I almost led the team in goals one season, and then Davey Arno <laughs> scored two goals in the last game of the year against New England, and oh, maybe. the bastard! Which, Bad, you're, which... you're cutting him short. I had six goals in what was it? Two thousand eight, two thousand nine, two thousand eight. Yeah, but that's that's actually a little. Davey sad had seven. You... It is sad. It is sad. But I was <laughs> thrilled personally. <laughs> yeah. Okay, number four. Uh, you were a leader on the team. You you mentored younger players. You taught Beasler the difference between pancakes and waffles. I did. Very important. Ooh, I like the sound effects. Pancakes and waffle. That is a very important thing for a young. It player. is. It is. Uh, number three. You were the first ever and maybe the only sporting KC supermodel. I'll take that. Yes. Uh, air, qu air quotes around still super. To this day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Wait a second. I'm still stuck on. Matt Beesler did not know the difference between a waffle and a pancake. Yeah, right. you, you can Cody's now tell out. Cody's the newbie. Cody's out. You got to go find the commercial on YouTube. No, I know. It's commercial. Yes. Okay. Go on. Yeah. He's doing a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and we we're also giving you shit for it, Cody. So, yeah. Yes. Number two. All right. Number two. You were one of the few Kansas City players called up to the national team that scored while you were with Sporting Kansas City or with we, the Wizards. I'll take, that. I'll take that. And it was against Mexico, so that's like a bonus point. That's like a bonus hundred. <laughs> Dad, I don't have your cadence down on these. You gotta, you gotta give a cadence to these. No, no, I like, I like the off-centered. I'm yeah. just putting it right in the middle of when he's talking. <laughs> that, that's fine. 
the funniest moment that I've ever been at a Kansas City <laughs> soccer <laughs> practice. I think Jimmy probably knows where this is going. Oh. You were trying to do a promo. Hercules Gomez was behind you, taunting you, mocking you. This was all on camera. I think you took 25 minutes or something to do this promo. And the whole time you were standing there holding little Jimmy while doing this. Yeah, uh, I remember that. Yeah. Comes full photo. Circle. These are uh, These are all Thad Bell specials. <laughs> and I'm going to give a bonus reason. You're the only player that has had a kid with the Kansas City Soccer Journal staff named after him. So really? Mike Kuhn. That's right. Conrad, oh. dude. Conrad yep. Kuhn. Let's go. Beautiful. That's I, I, I'm on it. I'm on it. I, I, I will say that you missed one that my, my mom was very proud of. I was named as the League <laughs> Humanitarian of the Year in 2009. There, there you go. go. Uh, yeah, I become a legend. Yeah. I used to, I I used to love. I used to love the people of Kansas City. I, I miss being around the people of Kansas City, and and uh, we tried to create a lot of special events. For, come back for and do another kids. pickup at the pickup games. Lot. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great. Yeah, I got to come back soon. It's it's been awesome. Okay, one top five straight to another. We'll let you get out of here, but we need your top five sporting KC Wizards of all time. Okay. Put them on this. Am I gonna get? Am I gonna get hassled if I? If I? I think if I put El Lobo, Josh Wolf, in, Dad's gonna get mad at me. <laughs> I will say, um, number one has to be Precky. I think you have to go with number. One. Maybe you guys wanted me to go uh, five up. But you go whatever order you want, man. That's my <laughs> five, top five. I can do whatever I want. Okay, exactly. so one is Precky. Uh, obviously, league MVP with with us in twenty twenty or excuse me, two thousand three. I think he's uh, – is he the club leader in goals and assists? He's got to be up there. and um, Combined, I'm sure, yeah. So, so obviously, his impact on the game overall and, and uh, what he did uh, in the league and especially for Kansas City was pretty special. It's unfortunate we, we kind of won some trophies without him in 2004, but um, I think Precky – because he broke his leg. But I'll say Precky uh, would be number one. I want to – just a shout-out really quick for 2004. We were what? three goals away from winning the first treble in yep. MLS history. Cause we right. were tied for the supporter shield, but had two less goals than the team that had it. And so that was the tiebreaker. And then we obviously lost by one goal in the MLS cup final after winning the open cup. So imagine we had a really special team. I don't think it gets talked about enough, but uh, I'll say that's so a Precky. I got Tony Miola, of course, uh, one of the best to, to ever do it. I think single-handedly helped uh, with Miklas Molnar win the 2000, MLS Cup and uh, two World Cups and what a special player, special guy. So Tony Mule is probably number two. Is this like a, do I say this is like a, because I think Peter Vermes would be in the conversation, especially if you include his coaching and all the influence that I mentioned that he had before, as, as, as everybody knows. he I think he's in there, but if it's just playing, playing only, I don't know if he had a, enough of a stint. Right. Yeah, uh, that's the hard part right there, man. As a player, he was really good, but I would not necessarily put him in as the top five for that. Right. And then you have, you know, I mean, Graham Zussi's got like, what, 8,000 appearances for Kansas City. So you know, <laughs> at, at every position. At every position. So what do you do? <laughs> what do you do with that? Ah, that's really tough. It, it's tough because I think when you think about Peter, when you think about Kleiner, when you think about Wolfie or anybody else that's been named as a sporting legend, you start to throw in. Uh, all these other things that they've done. And Kerry Zavagnin would be another one. Mo Johnston. There I you guess go, would be uh, thrown in there. Jimmy Nielsen. I, Kerry, I, 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 I think Kerry could five. be... Kerry's probably scraping five. I'm trying to think who three or four. I mean, you got to... I mean, I think... I think, you know, Roger Espinosa. I mean, these guys played in World Cups, you know, and, and Zussi and Beasler. Way too many qualifiers. I let it go off the rails. I <laughs> exactly. Started way too many qualifiers. I need a five, four, three, two. Quit being one. so damn nice, Jimmy. Quit being so damn nice. And, and and it's a it's a Kansas City best five, not guys who played in the World Cup best five. I get that, but I think a World Cup validates that you were playing at a high right. level when you were representing Kansas City. That's all. Right. That's not. I, get off my back. I cannot <laughs> believe how poorly timed that was. But uh, Jimmy, thank you very much. Yeah, I've just been in a big. Ma- I'm friends with everybody, so I just I'm gonna mash it all up. But I'll have Precky one and Tony <laughs> twenty two, and then everybody else is tied for third. <laughs> Suck it, haters! Hours. Suck it, Cody! <laughs> I-, I love you, Bob and and that. <laughs> okay, well, Jimmy, thank you very much thank for joining you. us, sir. I appreciate you. I can't all wait right. to come back and see you guys in person. 
Yes, next time. Soccer lot. We'll see Chase you soon. the rainbow, everybody. See ya.